This is the 16th video of the lecture series Optimization using Excel and in this video we are going to discuss another form of network flow model which is the minimum spanning tree problem and unlike the other network flow models where we solve the problems using Excel and Solver here we will use a, a heuristic based approach which is the Kruskal's method or Kruskal's algorithm. So again, this slide is borrowed from uh, video number 13, just to give a brief introduction of what a minimum spanning tree problem should look like. Uh, you should first check the first diagram here. This is the first diagram. The first diagram is given to you just to get the idea of a spanning tree. What is a spanning tree? Note that in a spanning tree, there are two basically important criteria to define a spanning tree. One thing is that there is a complete continuity in the network. That means here you can see the bold lines. They are forming a spanning tree and there is no break in the network. So first of all, there should be should not be any breaks. And secondly, uh, the spanning tree should cover all the nodes of the network. So you see all the nodes are the part of the spanning tree. So if these two criteria are met, then we will say that it is a spanning tree. And what is the objective here? Objective here is again, minimize the total cost. That is, to select the spanning tree in such a way that the sum of the um, distances, lengths or, uh, or the sum of the costs should be minimum. So that is the objective in this case. And as I was telling you, this particular diagram I have given you to just understand the spanning tree. But we are not going to solve this because this is already solved. You can see that already some spanning tree has been drawn here by somebody. So I have just copied it from somewhere just to explain. So uh, we are going to solve this particular problem, this particular spanning tree. And what is the method? As I have told you, the method is Kruskal's algorithm. Basically, there are two popular methods. One is Kruskal's, another is Prim's method. So, and what about the optimization model? We are not going to discuss any optimization model in this case because directly uh, solving the optimization problem for minimum spanning tree is very difficult using Excel. So, as I told you, there are two methods. One is Kruskal's, another is Prim's method. And another thing is, the, both these methods, Kruskal's and Prim's, are applicable only when you have an undirected graph. But what do you mean by undirected graph? Undirected graph is if you take any two nodes, suppose A and B are two nodes, undirected graph means there is a link between these two nodes. But that link does not have any direction. Like that is, it is not from B to A or from A to B. This is not the case. This is the case. This is not the case. So undirected graph means there is a linkage between the nodes, but there is no direction of that linkage. So what I'm saying is both Kruskal's and Prim's, both these methods will cover undirected graph. So for example, if you can see here between C and H, there is an arc, but there is no direction here. So every arc is like that type. No direction is given here. So this type of graphs can on, only be solved by Kruskal's and Prim's. Otherwise, if uh, arrowheads are given, that means there are directions, then we cannot use this Kruskal's and Prim's directly. And another thing is we are using Excel here just to give a particular structure of the solution process. We can use it without Excel also, just by eyeball method, just by staring at this and using logics. But I want to give you a structured approach of uh, solving the this problem, this type of problem. So that is why I am using Excel. And another thing is in this video, I am going to use in the Kruskal's method. And in the next video, I am going to use the Prim's method because otherwise, if I include both the methods in one video, the video is going to be uh, too long that I don't want to do. And so I am discussing Kruskal's method only in this video. So let us now move on to the Excel sheet. 
So now I have opened the Excel sheet where I am going to solve the spanning tree problem, minimum spanning tree problem using Kruskal method. Now you can see there are two, two steps here for Kruskal's algorithm. What, the, what is that? First step is sort the list of the edges in ascending order of their lengths. So what, the, what is the list? This is the list. This is the edges I have just noted down from the uh, spanning is from the network diagram. And these are the lengths. And what is what is the first step? First step is to sort the list based on the ascending order of the length. So how to do that? I'm going to data and then sort and then sort by length smallest to largest. This is the ascending order. So smallest to largest. Click on OK. So this is the step one. Step one is completed here. Now what is step two? In the step two they are saying that include the edges from the top of the list. So I am going to include the edges in the spanning tree starting from the top of the list moving downward and then exclude an edge if any closed loop is formed. I will exclude an edge if any closed loop is getting formed in the process and I will stop when all the nodes are included in a single spanning tree. So I will keep record of what node is included and what is not included and when all are included then I will stop the process. Ok, so let us now start it. So see first stage is length uh, having the minimum length of 1. So I will select CH. I am using this bold line in order to highlight the selected edges. So CH is selected. What is the decision? Decision is include. And do we have any closed loop? No, because this is just the start. No closed loop can occur here. And what is the included length? It is 1. Okay, so the next one is GI. This is GI. GI. Do we have any closed loop occurrence here? No, we are not finding any closed loop. So this is also included. No closed loop and the included length is 2. Then GH. This is GH. Let us, let us select GH. Include it. There is no closed loop. Again, the length is 3. Then HI. This is HI. This is HI. But tell me, can we include it? No, we cannot because a closed loop is getting formed, HI and G. So our decision is to exclude HI because we have a closed loop forming H, G, I and H. So included length is 0. Then the next one is EH. EH. This is EH. Can we include it? Yes, of course, because there is no closed loop getting formed. So include it. No closed loop. And included length is 5. Then AC. Where is AC? This is your AC. AC. We can include it because we are not finding any closed loop and the length is 6. Next is AB. This one is AB. This can also be included because we are not finding any closed loop. So length is 7. Then BD. Okay, I just forgot to mention. We have to note this here which uh, edges are included. So starting from very beginning, we had included first C, then H, then after that we included G, then we included I, I also, then HI is excluded, then EH. So we included E, then we included A, then C is included, then we included B. So now only D and F are left. So Move to the next one that is BD. Can we include it? 
we can very well include it because no closed loop is getting formed. So include it again, no closed loop. So 8 and D is included now. Now C E. C E is this one. This one is C. We will not include it because closed loop is getting formed. Which is the closed loop? C H E C and included length is 0. A D. So if we include A D here, again we need to exclude because the closed loop is A D B A and hence included length is 0. Then E G. We again must exclude that because if we include E G here then E G H E is the closed loop. So write 0 here. Then B F. B F. Yes, this one we can include because if we include no closed loop is getting formed. So we can easily include it and no closed loop and the length is 12. And we will stop here. Include and stop. Why? Because include and stop. Because you see they are telling you that stop when all the nodes are included in a single spanning tree. So now we have all the in nodes included in the singles in a single spanning tree. So we will stop here. So what we will do is we will delete this part because it is not needed and what is the total total of this included length is 44 so 44 is the total length total minimum length of the spanning tree and what is the diagram this is the diagram this uh, red part red network is the minimum spanning tree having a total cost or total length equal to 44 units so this is how the minimum spanning tree problem should be solved using Kruskal's method, Kruskal's algorithm. Note that uh, it is also possible by just looking at the diagram and follow these steps mentally and perform the necessary steps. But that is only possible when the network diagram is relatively simpler like this one. But it may also happen that you are given a very complex network. So if you try to solve it using hand and mind and only by seeing it, then it is very likely that you will miss one or two edges having the minimum length. So this sorting was done using Excel. If you just do it mentally, it is possible that for a complex network, you just forgot to include some particular edge. So what I am trying to say here is, you can follow this particular format used in Excel in order to make sure that nothing is missed out and every step is followed in the algorithm. So that's all about it. Hope you have understood the steps. And in the next video, we will discuss the another algorithm for minimum spanning tree, which is the Prim's algorithm. So until then, goodbye and thank you for watching.